This is Poor Valley, Virginia. That's an interesting name, considering it's hiding $60,000 worth of gold in an abandoned salt mine. Towards the end of the Civil War, a Confederate plantation owner named Abraham Smith decided that he didn't want Yankees stealing his money. So he hid $60,000 in an abandoned salt mine between Allison's Gap and Saltville. I'm not sure exactly where this salt mine is, but I want to go check it out. Look at this picture of Cherokee Lake from the top of Clinch Mountain. This place is awesome. I think I'm going to take a trip to Virginia to look for some gold. You know how people always buy frivolous things and then they say the catchphrase, you can't take the money with you? Well in this case, Zebulon Miller proves you can take the money with you. Zebulon Miller lived in Lynchburg, Virginia and was the younger brother of Samuel Miller. Samuel Miller was a successful businessman who had a lot of money, and that's pretty much where Zebulon Miller got his. When Zebulon Miller died in 1885, apparently he had over $3 million. What he decided to do with this money was a little bit strange. Five years before his death, he hired a team of engineers to design and build his tomb. Why would you need a team of engineers to design and build a tomb? Because Zebulon Miller had absolutely no plans of giving away any of his money. His tomb was made out of three foot thick concrete and steel bars. This was because his plan was to take $2.3 million with him and make sure that nobody could get in to steal it. He didn't build this tomb to prevent people from getting in, messing with this corpse, or for any religious reasons. He did it strictly because he wanted to keep $2.3 million with his dead corpse. He also left a million dollar trust fund to help guard for upkeep for the tomb. After he died, they had guards around the clock 24-7 guarding his tomb to make sure that nobody tried to break in. As you can see by this photo of the tomb, the guards have been replaced by an electronic security system, ADT. Can you imagine, either this guy had absolutely nobody to leave the money to, which is really sad, or he is just a horrible narcissistic person that had to take $2.3 million to the grave. Either way, a lot of people believe that money is there, some people believe it isn't, but if it is, nobody's getting to it. If you like those stories, I got two more for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave comments. Are there cryptic messages and anagrams in the writings of Sir Francis Bacon that lead to untold riches in Williamsburg, Virginia? Probably not, but there are a lot of people that think that there are. It's kind of crazy, but check this out. Sir Francis Bacon was a Lord and Chancellor of England from 1617 to 1621. He lived from 1561 to 1626. He was a writer, historian, philosopher, and a poet. There are people that believe that Sir Francis Bacon wrote a New World Order type of government and that he also wrote some of Shakespeare, if not all of, Shakespeare's plays. This is mainly due to the Baconian cipher. Sir Francis Bacon created this cipher. The creation of this cipher has led to people looking into all aspects of his writing, everything that he did for philosophy, his poetry, everything, trying to find codes, even when there clearly are none. This cipher that Sir Francis Bacon created was not that difficult to solve, but what it did was led to all of these people thinking that there were ciphers in everything that he did, that there were clues, that there were encoded messages, that there were anagrams in all of his writings from poetry to his philosophy to everything that he did that led people to believe that not only had he created new gov government, but he was actually William Shakespeare and that ha had written Shakespeare's plays. Based on last name alone, is all I can tell that this leads to Nathaniel Bacon. Nathaniel Bacon was a revolutionist that led Bacon's rebellion in 1675. That was the first rebellion against the British colonists. Nathaniel Bacon supposedly buried all kinds of stuff from Sir Francis Bacon. This includes the government documents that were supposedly the New World Order, as well as an original version, an original translation of the King James Bible. They were all supposed to be buried at the Bruton Parish Church in Williamsburg, Virginia. According to genealogy, Nathaniel Bacon is not related to Sir Francis Bacon. There's really no connection between these two. That doesn't mean that there couldn't be some obscure connection and that this story could possibly be true and that these people are really onto something. It looks doubtful and a lot of people think that this is just conspiracy theories, but it's a really interesting story. So, hey, why not?
The next story we have is about Confederate gold. This is the story of the lost treasure of John C. Mosby. During the Civil War, he found $350,000 worth of gold, silver, and other jewels that the Union had. He took it and then lost it. And as far as anyone knows, it's still out there waiting to be found. Here's a quick background on John C. Mosby. He was essentially a guerrilla fighter for the Confederate Army. He led a group of rangers called Mosby's Rangers that would sneak behind Union lines and cut off supplies. He would sneak around behind enemy lines, cut off supplies, and capture straggling soldiers, and was generally just a pain in the butt of the Union Army. They would also change into regular civilian clothes and blend in with the population, blend in with the civilians, so nobody could ever find them. On March 9, 1863, Mosby's Rangers invaded the Fairfax County Courthouse. As with all old stories that are worth telling, it was a dark and stormy night. They took over the courthouse, they captured a bunch of Union soldiers. At about 2 o'clock in the morning, Mosby and several other men went into the bedroom of Union General Edwin H. Stoughton. A story that people like to tell that nobody really knows exactly how it happened. But Mosby apparently slapped Stoughton on the butt, waking him up, and then Mosby told Stoughton that he was a prisoner. So in this raid, when they were capturing everyone, they caught all of these Union soldiers, they caught the general, and they also found $350,000 in gold and silver and, and other jewels that they, had, that they had gathered throughout the community. So after capturing all of these people and all this money, they were going to take it back to the south. They left and they were headed south when they heard of a local Union platoon in the area. At this point, they decided that they needed to hide the treasure. Legend has it that two soldiers, one of them may have been Mosby himself, took the treasure into the woods and buried it between two pine trees. They also marked the pine trees each with an X. The treasure was apparently hidden somewhere between Fairfax Courthouse and Culpeper. So right here, it's about 50 miles between the two. So good luck finding those two pine trees marked with an X after 150 years. You're, you're not going to be able to see that, but this is supposedly where $350,000 worth of gold and silver is. So hey, is it still worth a look? Might be. This is a story that's been passed down, so nobody really knows exactly where it is. So there are a couple other locations where people are looking. Another possible location is around Warrenton at the intersection of 29 and 211, which could either be here or here on each side of Warrenton. No matter how much you narrow this down though, two pine trees with X's on them, X's that you wouldn't be able to see today anyway, is a lot of area to cover, a lot of land, anywhere out there you're looking, it's gonna be really, really hard to find. Check out the references down in the description. There's a lot of great stories out there, a lot more detailed stories about the ones I told here. So go check those out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave comments. Thanks for watching.